I'm sure there's a movie reference in here somewhere. Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Mario & Luigi Partners in Time. In the last episode, we had a very, very discombobulated adventure through the rest of Peach's castle, exploring all the time holes that we could access but not actually do anything with because once we get through them, we see that they are all blocked off. In this episode, we are going to discover that we can walk on this railing that I didn't actually know you could walk on until now. Cool. In this episode, we are going to go into the one time hole that we actually can access and do something in there because we need to progress the plot somehow and this is the only way to do it. So let's get things started. So, if that little icon was any indication, we're going to be going somewhere rather yellow. And what is yellow in Mario games? The desert, of course, because every Mario game needs a desert. But this one isn't actually too terrible. First off, we got some rockin' music right here. I sing and love this song. Uh, but another thing is that, I don't know, I just do not like desert levels in Mario games. I hate them a lot more than the ice levels, honestly. And uh, I don't know if I would say I hate them more than underwater levels, but... Ice, or desert levels, I've always been like my least favorite just because it's so like, everything seems slow and just like a desert version like quicksand, all that jazz, and it's a combination of like slow and like kind of difficult, so I don't know, I'm just not really a big fan of it, but this one, not really uh, the case, it just has that desert theme, but not really anything that you don't really like about that thing. I guess that's sort of what RPGs do best is because like you don't have to deal with those sort of mechanics all that often, like if you don't like ice physics in a platformer, you can appreciate the ice aesthetic of a level in an RPG because you don't really have that all that much. Uh, I know that they are sometimes implemented. I kind of like it when RPGs take elements uh, that aren't standard RPG fare and make it uh, mainly when you're just walking through the overworld and actually doing something rather than just walking waiting for a battle to happen. If you know what I'm trying to say, I don't know if that was even a sentence or whatever, but hey, we got ourselves a big old coliseum here, so how's about we enter it and see what lies in store for us. Apparently, death awaits for us. They really need to have more than one song for when things go bad, but they don't. Okay, whatever. I'm even attempting to be in tune with this. And apparently, they just stopped chasing us because... Okay, now they're just gonna look around. And... Okay. Alright, I'll let them off the hook. It wasn't too terribly lazy of them. So, they are around on the search for us, but we're not actually going to run into any of them. Baby. Babies! Oh no! How do we get out of this one, I wonder? Hello, I remember you. Ha! You saps are all wet! What the fruit? Waltz into the dome's front door and you're sure to get spotted and carted away lickety-split. What? Remember me, huh? Seen the Koopa Chronicles reporter doll again has got you all goofy, does it? Heart. That's right, Kylie Koopa's got your number. Mm. Wah. Wah. No time to chat. I got a hunch this story's gonna be bigger than a Yoshi's Island hoo-ha. I don't want to know about Yoshi's Island hoo-ha. Sounds dirty or whatever. Here's the scoop. Princess Shroob's gonna be arriving here any minute now. Yeah, there's gonna be a big to-do celebrating the conquest of the Mushroom Kingdom. And that's just the fries, boys. Here's the burger. Come on, uh, some other princess types coming too. Mamma mia. mia. That can only be one other princess in this game. My sources indicate this other damsel likes pink and she may be royalty of some sort. What? Princess Peach, the doll they're bringing here is Princess Peach? It's not like they can bring any other princess in a desert setting. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Princess Peach came here in a time doohickey and got pinched by Princess Shroob? I gotta get this straight. You're snooping about the trying to rescue the adult Princess Peach? Oh, yeah. Sounds like the balloon juice to me, fella, but what a scoop it'd be if I were on if you're on the level. Balloon juice with the fruit. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, hello? Why? Alrighty then, you need to get into the dome so you can nab that princess, right? Actually, yeah, she do she is a reporter, so it would be kind of funny if I gave her a lot of hearts voice. It'd be a blast from the past, and we are going into the past, so let's bring out an old voice from an old LP. Well, we're down the street. Is that there's supposed to be there's supposed to be baby a sacred entrance around here somewhere? We're down the street, and it's so specific though. I don't know about the whereabouts. 
Yeah, it's a lot more entertaining. Speaking of entertaining, hooray, Luigi abuse. You're not getting anything further here, here, here regardless, so you gotta find the, find the secret entrance. Here's the only dead I got, the only entrance to the connection somehow to form, there's the statues. Now you're gonna knuckle down and find that entrance, you big lug. I've got some sleuthers of my own to take care of. Good luck, Whiskers. Why is it I get somehow better at talking when I talk crazy fast when I'm trying to mess up the words? I could do it right now, whatever. Now, uh, I do also like the voice clip of Mario going, Luigi! It's one of the more favorite voice clips of Mario. Uh, but yeah, we got ourselves a coin block, not coin block, um, M block up there. Let's uh, have these guys go up here. Luigi gets us two one-up mushrooms, which is very nice. And over here we got... Uh, it's coins. We got coins for days. Very, very nice. So just head on over here. Get my babies back. Baby, come back. You can blame it all on Luigi. Because I like to blame him for things. Because he's the worst. Okay, yeah. So basically, it's sort of like what we had to do in the wood area. Which I can't remember the name of now. How sad. Um, you basically have to go to those three dry bones statues you see on the screen. And... Or no, there's four of them actually. Got to go all four of them and deactivate them or activate them. I don't even know what words are. I'm just a failure all around today. Let's just keep on going with it though, because as long as we try, that's where the real victory is, right? Eh, I don't know. Okay, so what I remember is that we're actually going to be separating in this area. So maybe may have been in our best interest if we had gotten some badges that would benefit the babies when they were on their own. But right now we got ourselves a new enemy, and we're together, so we may as well show it off together. We got ourselves a Pokey. Everyone knows the Pokies. Uh, thankfully, they're a lot more uh, easy to deal with because this is an RPG, so we have to deal with, like, uh, high jumps, all that jazz. And we didn't even get to see what they could even do. I assume they could just uh, throw off their segments and, like, bop them at you and all that jazz, and they could become taller and shorter in comparison. Super drops and coinage. Hooray. Show them up here, and we got some dude swimming in the sand. Uh, let's see what this guy's all about. We can land on him. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot. Uh, this guy's a shrooba diver. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, instead of a scuba diver. Uh, he is going to do... That was an attack. Okay. Do not remember him doing the attack. He has some one other move that I was expecting him to use, but that was certainly something. And did a lot of sinking damage because my bros are not... are kind of glass cannons right now. Uh, let's go ahead and throw the baby- No, I didn't mean to do that! Okay. Uh, whatever. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this right now, and apparently we healed HP or something like that. Uh, Pokey's gonna create some more heads, and this guy is going to shroop a dive, and pop up, and there you go! So thankfully I did that right the last second, jump up here with Pokey. Probably should have kept him alive just so we could have seen what he did, but whatever. Jump on him, and... Uh, he's gonna do that attack once more. Not that difficult to counter, but I just wasn't expecting it. I was expecting a certain other attack. Uh, really awkward if that wasn't even the enemy that did the attack that I'm thinking of, but whatever. Still haven't seen what a Pokey could do, or what he's capable of. So now that we did an attack with the babies, I kinda wanna see if there's an enemy line around here. Yes, there is, and we could just attack with the big bros, and we can even out the experience. Not really sure if that's, uh, the best idea because of EXP distribution or all that jazz. Like, we could... Uh, have everyone in the attack. Oh wait, that was not the attack I was expecting either, but when they throw that weird floppy fish, uh, you don't want to jump, but then when they have a spike ball in their hand, then you do want to jump. That's another attack that they could do. I swear- yeah, that's the attack I was thinking of, them swimming through the sand. Jeez, I knew I wasn't crazy. Okay, there he goes. We got that attack, and I'm pretty sure that's all they're capable of. Uh, we could jump on him, but unfortunately I'm missing. Uh, just get one more attack in, and, jeez, got a lot of HP. Uh, there we go. Uh, that's taken care of. Uh, EXP is somewhat evened out and all that jazz. I'm not sure if that was the smartest move, because we could have gotten just extra EXP for the babies. Not exactly a bad thing, but I like leveling up all at the same time. I don't know, I'm just weird like that. Uh, we got some more enemies, so I guess we could just fight them all as I'm, uh, talking about stuff that's happened recently. Uh, Christmas just passed by, uh... I guess that's not really something I want to talk about, though, because Christmas is very, very crummy this year. I don't know if it's just me being extra negative right now, but trying to think back on it, I don't know if I've ever had a really, really fantastic Christmas. I, probably the best Christmas I had was when I got my GameCube, but um, I don't know. Like The time leading up to Christmas is usually the more cheery 
uh, parts of December for me just because I have that Christmas mood and I'm like having a lot of Christmas like traditions of watching a lot of shows and music and all that jazz that I listen to every year. But then when the actual day comes around, I'm surrounded by a bunch of crummy people that I don't like being around. So I unfortunately don't get to enjoy Christmas Day all that much. Uh, probably the best part is, um, in modern times, however, is just, uh, whenever I send out Christmas messages to, uh, my online family, and I get very, very nice responses. That's probably the highlight of my year every time. So, thank you all for, uh, being part of that and making, uh, something good happen this year, because the majority of this year was just really, really terrible. But we're not going to talk about that, because that's not fun or enjoyable. I do like talking about... I, do, I don't mind talking about uh, heavy topics or just like real serious stuff at the t uh, in videos, but uh, usually it's with a purpose when I want to talk about it, like have some sort of conclusion or moral or goal going forward. Oh, this one, I really don't have anything like that. I'm just like, this year was crummy. Let's just move on and forget about it. All right, we got uh, four ice flowers. We have any more enemies. These are very broad areas, so we're going to be running into a lot of enemies. I don't wonder if I want to speed up this area, and yeah, probably not completely necessary. But as you can see, this is going to require us to separate. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do here. Mystery of the Gritty Desert by Unknown Guy. He was a shy guy. Desert sentinels face each other, waiting to be linked by beams of light. A pair must stand by each statue with open its eyes. One pair jumps quickly in the ordained order. The second pair follows suit, also jumping in that order. That's the legend. It appears to be a hint as to how the distant statues are to be connected. One would assume the statues looking up and looking down could be connected similarly. So what you're going to want to do is, after you hit these two blocks, it will do this thing, and we got to go ahead and hit that one within 10 seconds, but obviously there's no way we can actually reach that in time. So what you got to do is separate the big bros and the little bros so that they are on the different sides and they uh, go ahead and hit them relatively at the same time. But I don't like having the bros separated because then some of them miss out on EXP that they could be getting together. So part of me wants to just go through these areas with all of them for the time being and then fight all the enemies. And then afterwards, I will go ahead and uh, hit those buttons so we can get into the Coliseum. That sounds like a plan if you ask me, but something tells me that they're going to force me to separate the bros at some point. It'll be kind of annoying to not uh, do it otherwise. Uh, so we finally get to see a pokey attack. And hey, we killed him in the last hit, so that's really cool. Uh, if you don't kill him in that last hit, then you'll just shorten his body. It'll make it easier to jump on him, I guess, or something like that. I think it just gives him less attacks in general, which is nice. Uh, we got another l -lock. Yeah, these areas have a lot of stuff in them. Uh, and just one coin. I don't know why they keep giving us one coin, but whatever. We got a train set right here. Not sure what that's all about. Uh, anything else over here? We got very suggestive looking cactuses. I'll say that much. Uh, can we reach up here? There's gotta be some way up here. They wouldn't just put a coin block there just for funsies. Maybe they did put it there just for funsies, because I can't find a way to get up there. That's very Akutako. Uh, for now, I guess... Oh, I, I know how we could get up there, but not at the time being, okay? Guess we need a move that we haven't gotten yet, but as you can see, there is a warp pipe over there, which, again, we cannot access yet, so that's a unfortunate turn of events. Uh, I guess for now, I actually... Eh, for the sake of making things short, how about we actually do separate the bros? Uh, so we head into this bottom area. We got this scuba guy. I think I'll start cutting out fights now just because I want to fight everyone along the way. But I don't want to show off the same two enemies over and over and over again. Okay, just in case you want to know what happens when you use a hammer on a pokey. Uh, it just knocks off one of the segments, so not all that helpful. Just use your jump so you aim for the head and do actual damage. Got a lot of enemies right here, so I think this would be a good opportunity to show off one of our bros items. This is the Pocket Chomp. Press the button after jumping on an enemy as he lands on the enemy. So I'm going to just show it off because I know what it does. I just need to like stop reading and start doing. So Mario is going to jump on an enemy. Baby Mario is going to hit the enemy with a hammer afterwards. So you got to just uh, time it so the one riding the chomp from behind uh, hits the baby or hit the dude or whatever. If you accidentally hit the chomp on the head, that will result in the chomp getting faster and faster and it will catch up to the baby and or catch up to the big bro and it will do uh stop the trend or whatever it's just a very slow 
uh, Bro's attack. I don't actually like using all that much. It does actually do damage when the Chain Chomp catches up to you, so do a lot of damage, I guess, but I don't know. It's just kind of slow and awkward that I don't really like using all that much. What I do like using is... Oh, that was a very excited sound. It's like, what I do like using is the Trampoline. It is kind of like the Cannonballers, except it could go on forever, and it hits every enemy on the field, but it is random. You don't have a say in the matter, so let's see what this is like. Probably not the smartest idea to use uh, two of them in the same uh, turn or the same uh, fight, but whatever. We're showing off and demonstrating some things, so it's all good. Just keep on bouncing forever and ever and ever. Just gotta line it up with uh, the enemies below and see who they're going to hit so you can time it properly. And after you mess up one time, though, it will uh, result in the trampoline disappearing. But we got rid of them all before we messed up, so we are good to go. And get a lot of experience, a lot of coins, and a level up for Mario. Get all that. Oh, yeah. Let's see. It's been a while since we checked on this thing. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Speed's looking really good. Stash is looking extra good. I'm gonna, like, I don't ever need discounts at stores, but like it also increases lucky hits. I gotta remember that. So let's get plus four. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Luigi gets a level up. Very, very nice. Luigi, I feel like you could use some extra attack power. So let's see. HP is looking really nice. And that's also looking really nice, but I also see a one in there. Uh, huh. I'm gonna go for attack and hope and regret it. Yes, six plus six. There's the spike ball, in case you wanted to see what it looked like, because I'm sure the animators worked very hard on that design of the spike ball. It was very important to them, so I want to make sure it gets its time in the sun. It's going to get its own LP one day. Hello! Okay, that's a kind of annoying attack. Uh, I guess the one benefit of lowering the pokey's height is that if he's too tall, you can never dodge his attacks when he just dashes at you, so that was kind of unfortunate. But what isn't unfortunate is that Baby Mario got a level up, so it's all good in the hood now. Uh, HP's looking really singing good. Uh, attack is also looking great. Okay. Are we gonna go with HP? Maybe? Plus six? Can't argue with that. Baby Luigi follows suit and gets a level up himself. Two, 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 three, zero. Uh, HP's looking really good. Attack is looking good. Are we just gonna go with HP? Speed? Oh, God. Uh, let's go with... Uh, phooey. Speed's looking the best, but I don't really want it. Do I want it, though? Oh, god darn it. Plus one. I didn't feel too confident about that one. And Zomji, we're magically at the top. Yeah, I decided to just fight all the enemies both below and above, so I could just save extra time. And hey, there's one more enemy, so it was all vain or whatever. I probably cut out way too many second fights in RPGs, but I don't know, that's just how I roll. It's just like, oh, I saw this enemy before, it's not anything exciting or new. And like, at least with Pokemon, sort of laid out where you like, some fights are required, some aren't required. In any other RPGs, it's just like, technically no fight is required. It's just a matter of how good you want to be or how much experience you want to have. So it sort of makes it a bit more complicated in terms of keeping stuff in or out. The Pokemon, I just always show required fights, but the non-required ones, I always do off camera. But this one, I'm just like, oh, I saw the enemy before. No need to show it again. Let's just keep on going. Keep the show rolling. Uh, that's unfortunate again. Uh, go ahead and jump, Eddie. Jump. And we are good. Do, 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 do. Now that that's taken care of, hopefully I can actually come back now. Uh, yes, we can. Yes, we can. It's a One Piece theme song. Ice flowers. Go ahead and dig. Pull that out. We got another bean. Getting them for Fawful. So I was thinking about it a little bit. If you do get the uh, the ultimate badge that he has that allows you to have uh, use your bros items without ever decreasing them, it only works for the one character that has it equipped. So it's not like for every single character it's like that. But basically, if you equip that to one bro, then they could use bros items over and over and over again without any consequences. So it becomes really significant useful. Well, I don't think there are enough beans in the game to where you could have four of them. And Fawful's badges are exclusive to his shop, so you can't get them anywhere else. I don't think you can get uh, them on all your bros eventually. It's, it doesn't work like that, but I guess it would be overpowered in that sense if you want to go ahead and do it like that, but I don't know. I'm not entirely sure I want to. A, it's overpowered, and B, uh, I don't think it's entirely necessary, and it's overpriced on that jazz. I kind of want to like save it for something else, possibly. I don't know if he ever sells any new items, though, so I'm not sure if it's there's any real benefit to saving my beans right now, but 
I guess no real harm in just waiting it out and seeing. Because it was nothing I was too terribly interested in over there. Uh, got anything else? No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, this block over here accidentally got off camera. It was just a coin, nothing special. Oh, was that a bean spot? Yeah, it was a bean spot. That was that's something special indeed. I don't know why I'm walking up the hill with the babies. So here, so we got train tracks here. So I guess this used to be a train station of some sort because we saw the train back there and the tracks. But then the desert rolled over and it brought this place to dust. So at least it was telling some sort of a little story along the way, making the desert a little more interesting, which I very much appreciate. Uh, nothing else around here. It seems. We just want to see if there are any more bean spots. Uh, I guess we can go this way. Let's see if we can go with both characters. That wait, where wasn't there supposed to be like? Wasn't there like warp pipes or something that we could go down? Yeah, this thing right here. I'm sorry if you guys are just yelling at the screen, be like, why did you go to the warp pipe? Yay! Secret genes, secret agent genes. Uh, head on over here, get that coin. Uh, let's see what these secret genes are all about. Not so secret anymore. It's a secret to everybody. Secret genes. Genes that somehow make the wear appear more mature. It's for the babies. Increases defense, speed, and stash, but lowers an offense. Uh, I'd rather not. I'm all about that offense, so I don't really care. Uh, but then again, it increases your uh, stash power, which would increase lucky hits, so maybe it is worthwhile if you equip one of those. Alright, so... Not saying that my uh, tactics are the best ones, just that I'm all about offense. I kind of just go with the consequences of getting hit and whatnot. I'm just hopefully confident in my abilities. Probably by the end of the game, I will switch my equipment around to where it's not all about offense. It's more so about uh, even Stevens and whatnot. But uh, for here, for the here and now, I'm kind of okay with keeping it like this. Uh, what do you got to say, buddy? Where are you going, son? You want to move on? You got to have to play a timed game. You going to hit the block that'll appear behind that wall over there before the fight time runs out. You get it done, son, and I'll let yeah, y'all pass the official desert program into runners. Okay, guess we got to do that. Just got to go all the way over there and hit that block. Of course, we can't do that while walking, so we'll have to go to the bros ball. Go, and I kind of messed myself up by having the babies with me, so roll. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Uh, let's see, we just get through the pathway uh, don't want to go on that hill because I'll probably slow our progress uh, just go over here and we're good simple enough just drop that down hopefully there's a warp pipe block around here so we can get the babies back nice and easy you boys are a set no doubt about it y'all are desert perimeter runners go on go and pass bye y'all okay found a little mini game for us just so we don't feel too terrible about our new bros attack be like oh we can never actually use it I guess that's the thing, we don't actually get to use these attacks in battle. I know the bros items are uh, varied enough in their own, so it isn't really necessary, but I don't know, I kind of liked how in Superstar Saga your bros attacks actually got used as actual attacks. And we got ourselves a lot of enemies over here, so, and there's no warp pipe unfortunately, so I'm going to have to have the babies walk over here. So that's what I mean, it's not really a speedrunning tactic thing, even though it makes you go faster, you still have to lug the babies over here on their own, so it doesn't really help you in the end. Oh well. Reunited and it feels so good. We got ourselves some new enemies here, so I guess the desert isn't all about just stinking shrooba divers and pokies. These are the babombs, as you would expect from any Mario game. They explode, but now if you take them out too quickly, basically if you hit them once and they survive, they will ignite and then they will explode on contact and do a lot of damage. But for now, they just sort of do a little dash attack, kind of like they're a Goomba. Uh, you can see they uh, move their eyes around. It shows you where they're going to hit, even though it was walking to Mario. It moved, looked at Luigi the last second and went and attacked him. So they are pretty easy to take care of if you have high attack power, but if you let them live past a single attack, then they will do a lot of single damage. And even if you counter against it by jumping on top of them, uh, that's still going to hurt you. So be careful. I uh, got more pocket chumps. I'm not a fan of these things personally, but whatever. I see the appeal and stuff. There's actually a very, very, very small chance of you finding a female pocket chomp. It doesn't really do anything. It's just an aesthetic thing, like a different like appearance. They can sometimes just have a bow on, and it's funny, I guess. I uh, got rid of one of them already. I can't speak. That thing. Uh, I guess this might give us an opportunity to see what it's like when they ignite. We probably won't see until the attack is over, though. Uh, jump this, and wow, we're making quick work of them. They don't have all, a whole lot of HP. Apparently. And we're already good. Okay. Fine by me. With that experience. Wow, that was a lot of experience. Okay. And we got another Shrooba Diver. Come on, buddy. Get on over here. Kind of like the... Whatever it's called. That ant thing from Super Mario RPG. I don't know. Anything that's like swims in sand and it just like reminds me of Mario RPG or the 
substitutes from Mother 3, I guess, which are also ants. I don't know, was it with, I don't know, are, like, desert ants a thing? Like, I'm sure they are, but, like, are they famous or something like that? Why is this, was with Nintendo RPGs having ants in deserts that create whirlpools of quicksand or something like that? I don't know. It's just weird, or maybe I'm the only one who notices that and nobody else cares! So, moving on. Let's see, I guess we're walking through here, I can talk about more things. More interesting or happy pappy things that have happened recently. Uh, I saw Mary Poppins Returns, I'm sure I'm gonna make everyone hate me real quick, but uh, I've actually never seen the original. I've seen bits and pieces of it, I got the gist of it and all that jazz, but... Uh, yeah, it's a movie, I guess, like, oh, uh, I don't know, I'm sure people have different opinions on it, or maybe it's getting a lot of bad reviews or something like that, I actually looked up it, uh, people are like, kind of negatively receiving it, but I feel like the original is the same way in which it was more so just about the presentation of it, it was being like, oh my god, look at this live action stuff melding in with the animated stuff, it looks so cool and stuff. But showing it in today's day and age, it's not that impressive because we see that all the time, or not all the time, but like we've seen it, like a sort of with the CGI movies and all that jazz. But um, I don't really care all that much with of uh, with the Mary Poppins thing because there was nothing really new to show in terms of animation style. It was still impressive with like the 2D stuff because usually it's like CG what and whatnot, where they usually show that. But with this, it was 2D, and I guess that was cool. But I don't know, it was more so just about a bunch of random nonsense happening for the sake of it happening and no real explanation for it. I know that's sort of the Mary Poppins thing, be like, hey, it's random, but who cares if it doesn't make any sense? Because it's Mary Poppins and she could do anything. But like, just because you acknowledge the fact that it makes no sense doesn't excuse the fact that your story makes no sense. So uh, it was just sort of a crummy story, all things considered, in my opinion. And like, sort of, uh, sorry if I'm spoiling the movie right here, but in the end, we're like, they have to like get a paper to a dude before time runs out to like save their house or whatever um they end up getting there because they like turn back time by turning back the hands on big ben or whatever but uh, like it doesn't really make sense because a they're not actually turning back time they're just changing the clock a little bit and b it turns out that like after they turn back the time and stuff they get there on time or whatever it didn't actually matter because the dude was like, oh, you don't actually have the document or you don't have the signature on the document, so you can't actually save your house or whatever. And then some dude walks in and he's like, oh, hey, uh, you guys could not worry anymore because I'm going to fire this crummy dude who's like trying to sabotage your existence and whatnot, so you're good now. Like, it just made all their efforts worth nothing because it didn't actually matter if they had turned back time or not because this dude was still going to come in at this moment and he was going to fire his stupid son or whatever and he would just call them in the morning and be like, oh hey, remember your house? It's like, it's good now, don't worry about it. So that's why I didn't really, I don't know, this movie was just really bad. And like, there were so many moments where I was just like, oh my god, like every character has to sing a song every five seconds and it's just like, I, I like musicals if my obsession with The Great Showman was any indication, but like, when it's like over the top hamminess and like it makes no sense whatsoever and like I like when it's telling a story. It was literally no point in any of the songs. It was just like, oh hey, a new character's here or a new scene transition. Let's sing a song about it or like, hey, let's sing about our feelings, sing about our story. But like they're telling the kids to talk about their story. Like your kids, you don't have a story. You don't have like life experience yet. But it's all like they're just gonna sing about literally everything that we've seen up to this point of the movie. You're like, we already saw it! We don't need to have an explanation of what just happened in the second movie. We've been here already! Plus six, hooray. Uh, I don't know, I was just really sick and annoyed by a lot of second things in this movie, and I'm sorry if I'm just like pooping on everyone's 69! Pooping on everyone's 69, ugh. Pooping on everyone's favorite childhood film, but like, I don't know, it was just dumb, in which like nothing happened, and like anything that did happen it was just like it made no sense. The kids were annoying, the parents were just like generic and like the pause like oh i hate the cg character that comes to my life and i hate him and everything but ruins my life but then they're gonna save me in the end so then i'll be their friend it was a movie i guess and that is a topic that i could just use to fill out a video and mario is dead oh well maybe the power of friendship will bring him back or something i don't know because he's not actually got oh you jerk Oh, that's a sneaky, stinking tactic. He blew himself up so I couldn't actually get the experience. Oh, that bob bomb is a Mary Poppins fan. Uh, just jump in here. Big pal badge. Okay, what's that all about? Probably it gives you a big power up. Hmm. Uh, is that the badge we have right now? Uh, it is. Yes, it is the big pal badge. So we only need to get one of them technically, but now we have another. Uh, let's use some mushrooms on Mario since we have plenty of them to burn. 
And there you go. Okay, so our EXP is going to be all thrown off now because I just messed everything up, but whatever. Got any more enemies that we could fight? So that was the ceiling, but we do have a coin there. Or a coin block, rather. I don't think we can actually reach it, though, unless there is something right alongside here. No, there isn't. So these will be available at a later time. We're going to just come back here with different power-ups, but I don't even know if I'll remember at that point. Uh, it doesn't seem like anything else. Uh, there's a ba bomb. Must fight. Must get revenge. Baby Mario gets a level up. Get all that points. And uh, let's see. Nothing looks super great right now. Probably attack is the best. So we're going to go with attack. Plus one. Are you kidding me? God darn it. If I got a plus one, does it give me a chance to have like another high roll next turn? No, it's looking good. HP is looking nice. That's looking okay. Uh, speed's looking really good. Stash. Let's try and attack with Baby Luigi. Plus one. Great. I'm just terrible at everything, it seems. Uh, this coin block if we can. Uh, anything else around here? Doesn't look like it, except for this thing right here. Uh, we pretty much made our roundabouts the entire desert, though I guess we never really had to separate after all. Okay, that's good. I thought that, like, big old log right in the bottom left corner of the map right there was going to separate us or something like that. It was going to be like a moving platform or whatever, but it didn't seem to be the case. Okay, that's a new attack from the bob and it makes him self-destruct, so I guess it ends the fight prematurely, or ends his fight prematurely. Get some more experience, get a pocket chomp that I'm never going to use, except I probably will. And just keep on going. Uh, over here we got ourselves two super mushrooms, we got coins, we got a pipe, and we got more suggestive looking cacti. I uh, just got one right there, and it's another hundred coin. We just love handing those things out to us. Get that on going and we got some fish bones down there looks kind of scary and ominous maybe it was an underwater train a sea train if you will Eh, that sounds crazy that would never happen on with the progression trying to say something different to spice things up because spice is life uh anything else for you? oh there was a thing over there oh but there's another enemy as well must get all of them because i can never leave one enemy behind must get all the experience because i need it for the final boss otherwise i will never succeed so, other than Mary Poppins, anything else I saw recently? I saw Once Upon a Deadpool. I know it was like sort of just PG-13 Deadpool, but it actually did have extra scenes in it. It was like a Deadpool kidnapped Fred Savage and was telling him a bedtime story, which is literally just Deadpool 2, but like it cut out any of the super graphic uh, moments. And they replaced it with like really funny stuff like him just having tea, making tea in the kitchen or like uh, watching animals at the zoo or something like that i kind of wish there was like more of that i kind of wish they tried to make it pg not pg-13 because like it was more or less the same stuff i i didn't really mind it too much because a i like the movie and b i believe the money was going towards charity so it was a good cause in the end but um the extra scenes were really fun for me and uh it was just really a fun thing to experience i kind of wish though they tried to make it pg just because it's really sick and funny to see deadpool interact with like little five-year-olds at the zoo talking about like the singing sea lion or whatever and just like having to be super chill and out of character but just so sick and awkward and whatnot but uh, unfortunately that didn't happen but it was it was just fun to watch Deadpool again why not uh, let's see I really wanted to see the Nutcracker because uh, I don't know just like all about that it's actually sort of somewhat similar to a script idea that I had but I don't want to talk about it uh, quite yet because I might make it one day. That'd be something, right? If I actually became a movie creator one day. I don't know. So I'm going back and forth on what I want to be. Like, I wanted to be a writer, but I switched over to acting as my emphasis because I am just not a fan of the idea of selling off my stories to other people and just never seeing them again, never having a part in them again. I don't like that. I know that writers could still be on board for projects and, like, uh, still have their name attached to it and all that jazz, but, like, I have no directing or producing skills, so... I would not be very good in bringing a project to life. I would sort of either have to get a director or producer that I trust who would keep me on board uh, throughout the entire project and just like have me be attached to it once it gets released or just be okay with letting things go, I guess. I don't know, I just like everything I write, I care about it too much and I don't like the idea of just writing things for the sake of making money or just like passing it off to be made by someone else. I really don't like that. So 
I sort of wanted to pursue acting more because A, I think it would help me be become a better person or just like like myself more if I was able to feel more comfortable in my own skin. And then also just the fact that I'm not writing something, I just like being able to take on different characters or uh, become part of different worlds and just become detached from the soul that is Midnight and Beyond because that guy's kind of lame and I don't like him all that much. But some people uh, find amusement in him sometimes, so I appreciate that. Uh, anything else doesn't seem like it. We got this tornado right here. Is this something we could even do now? I guess this is going to be where we're going to get separated. Uh, if we go over here. Right on here. And we are now separated from the babies. Oh, well. Babies! I did fight the enemies from before, so I guess this would be a good time to get separated. Better time than any. I did not get the item blocks, though, because I wanted to show them off to all of you. Also, it'd be really awkward if we found an enemy that I missed by accident on my first time around here, but hopefully that won't happen. Uh, oh, there is a warp pipe block here as well, so I'll have to keep that in mind for later. Oh, this is a bit awkward. I guess I'll just try and remember that for later. Use the bros ball in here. It will... Uh, do nothing for you. That's a bit awkward. I don't know what that's for exactly. I know this is for getting us across here, but what does this do, per se? Put it in here. A, B, up, down, left, right. It just pops you out. That's sort of weird. Okay. Uh, for now, I guess we're just going to... Uh, separate. We're gonna split up gain. Head on up here to this dry bone statue. Unfortunately, the, not an actual dry bone, so I can use the dry bone's voice, which I love doing so much. Switch over to the babies. Looks like they're on the other side, but actually they're on the other, other side. So we can just walk on over here. And we're actually gonna get some stuff done now. Who would have thought? Uh, just head on up here if we can. And uh, where the heck is it? This is very Ako Taco. There we go. Uh, probably didn't need to do that, but whatever. Just prolonging the inevitable. Hit this. Hit this. Switch over to the babies. And hit this. Hit this. And now I open the gaping jaw of the beast. Blah. <laughs> I don't know, it just looks funny. Uh, also, the texture on this thing, it reminds me of the graphics in Mario Pinball Land for the Game Boy Advance. I remember that was a game. A lot of people don't really think about it, but it's for the Game Boy Advance. It was just like a weird little pinball game. Also, speaking of that, there was a Mario Ball that was released uh, by McDonald's. like a rubber ball. I'll show a picture of it. I had it as a kid, but now it's gone. It makes me sad. I really want it. So if any of you have this thing lying around and want to give Midnight and Beyond a late Christmas present, uh, please send all your extra candy to Harry the Werewolf in Spooky Town Acres on Candy Cane Lane. I don't see people, whatever. Very weird topic. I just need to pad something out in this episode to get us all wrapped up. Because we are just about done, but I am just about out of topics. I'm also feeling more and more sick as we go on. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful idea to be continuing on with the recordings. But whatever. We are going to keep on trucking. Blah! Uh, I should have done the other one so I could have seen his face a bit more, but whatever. That shiny shell we saw before is now eradicated, and there's an extra switch for us. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and roll our balls down here, the bro balls. So I guess we have a little bit of a speed running tactic right now. Just roll on back down to this area. And get the back the babies. There we go. But before we go, we are going to throw them back in here and completely miss. Throw them up here and see what we got. Oh, it's actually a bit of a pathway this time. And there's, oh, wait a minute. Hello. I see. Put them in here. And then the babies hit the switch. And it pops them over there. So I guess that you have two different options on how you want to separate them. But now we got them separated when we don't actually need them to. So we're going to thankfully at least, whoa, we got shot up pretty high right there we got the bros back over here thankfully we actually hit the pipe block with the babies and we are just about done here so once we hit that block we're gonna end this off and this was a 40 
48? It's 46 minute recording. I was not expecting that. Hopefully the stuff I cut out makes it a bit shorter. My God. Uh, I did want to do this in one episode just because I felt like last episode was like nothing happened because I was just so stinking out of it. In this episode, I guess it was a desert for you. We were just kind of slow moving, but we finally got stuff done. We could enter the Coliseum. I don't even know if it's readily apparent that it's a Coliseum. Maybe it's just a big old building. I spoiled the fact that it was a Coliseum to all of you. Oh no, how terrible of me. Uh, let's see, we go on over here and completely miss again because that's what I do best. And now we could enter the stinking Coliseum. Next time on Pokemon Coliseum, I mean Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, I mean Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. Very disappointing coin block to end things off. We are going to enter Zik Coliseum and possibly reunite with Princess Peach because she is apparently being brought here as we speak. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.